And guess what? It is more graft. So uh, the headlines on the standard is graft, all eyes shift to Uhuru Kenyatta. And I'm going to shortly involve the panel that we have here this morning. Uh, but just to name a few of the scandals that have been mentioned in the standard, just as a reminder, and why all eyes are on His Excellency the President. Uh, we have uh, the National Youth Service. Of course, we know there are two major scandals. There's the 798 uh, million uh, Kenyan shillings that was uh, lost uh, previously. Now we have 9 billion. We also have Karen Land. 8 um, billion linked to 40 members of parliament and state officials. Now we have another scandal that's coming up here, the NCPBD, 9 billion paid to undeserving brokers, and the list goes on. You've got JKIA, Afia House, NSSF, Tasia, Police CCTV. This really irks me, and this is uh, the CCTV system that was put in place, uh, which cost 15 billion, a whooping. 15 billion. But guess what? The CCTV uh, cameras work sometimes, sometimes they don't. Uh, and of course, that includes also the traffic lights that uh, were put in the Nairobi Central Business District. Youth Enterprise, Langata Road Primary School. Let me start with you, Nerima. Does the back stop with the president? We have him there, and all eyes shift to Uhuru. What is he expected to do? We, he's on record saying, Nataka Nifanya. Well, he's the leader of this country, so he should push for actual court hearings and prosecutions. He should push the DPP, he should push... But then you're also going to be the same people who are going to say he's interfering with uh, independent, independent institutions, institutions <laughs> that are constitutionally mandated to do that. Michael, the evidence is all there. And even when we watched with the NCPB uh, hearing yesterday, I mean, things are just flat out, obviously, that there is an issue, that there are issues with our procurement processes and those are his people people that should work underneath him and as a manager think about it you talked about the house and your management mm -hmm. in your house mm -hmm. if someone is not using money adequately what do you do well you ensure that you deal with them Absolutely. however there has to be a sufficient evidence and i know you're going to say there's sufficient <laughs> evidence but some of these guys have covered their tracks or oh. are covering their tracks using the same money <laughs> hmm. They, they can't. They can't really <laughs> cover their tracks <laughs> because, <clears throat> like, this money comes through a bank, and in most cases, when you receive money above one million, it's flagged. It's flagged. You yeah. are called to sign a declaration. You declare where the money came from, where the money is going to to, to be used what for, is, and yeah. you can't open an account today. And tomorrow you are receiving, you 60 know, million. sixty million in the account. And after one day, you are withdrawing all the money. You know, the banks should join other Kenyans in the fight against corruption. We have uh, um, uh, an uh, banking uh, fraud unit mm -hmm. that operates in this country and based at the uh, Central Bank of Kenya. I think these people should be doing their work to show that, uh, you know, this money that comes in, illegal money that comes in, and this money can be traced to the source. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who signed those documents, there are people who did what. So it is easier to get these people and nail them. <laughs> Let us not go for the, for the small people. Mm -hmm. Because yesterday you saw a clerk, somebody who was working at Uduma Center, being, yeah. uh, you know, prosecuted that uh, she was involved in this, some of these scandals. Mm. You know, this, this was just a clerk, maybe her mistake would have been just to pass, you know, documents or to sign a document and pass it through. The question but is she's who, not, who was handling She's not documents. the main beneficiary. There are people who benefit from this, uh, this money. Mm -hmm. Let us not go for, 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 for the small fish. Mm -hmm. Let us go for the big fish. Mm -hmm. And going for the big fish, it calls for the president to crack the whip. We can't do things usually as, as things, business as usual, and expect different results. Mm -hmm. Because scandals have been there. You remember the main scandal of, uh, you know, in the Grand Coalition government that almost ended the career of the deputy president mm -hmm. because he was the minister of agriculture, of agriculture. And there were so much, you know, scandals. You know, people could pick means from the, the serious board and sell to the, uh, to, to, to the producers, to mm -hmm. the millers. Mm -hmm at exalted price and get why should people you know be like middlemen between the government institutions mm -hmm. and uh, private entities you know so there's, right. there's so much that need to be looked into in mm -hmm. terms of this and as I've, I've said mike let us not talk about uh, corruption this is no longer Let's corruption. Do something about it it's, and, it, and, it's and, economic sabotage mm -hmm. and there are economic crimes 
that need to be handled. Because okay. oh, there, there might there be somebody who will argue. If you look at page four of your standard, mm. uh, which is right here, there is a story there. Police raid homes in 647 million fraud prod. And we do know that we have a former CS's home that was raided not too long ago. Mm -hmm. They didn't find him. They didn't find much. Well, then the organizations or the institutions that are in place might say, we're actually trying to do something. <laughs> we are cracking the whip. Nerima, are you convinced that they're cracking the whip? There's a story right there. Police raid homes of 600. Although, again, uh... it's the, the managers who they're raiding. Um, and we're not sure whether they're going to find something. Or could this also be another scripted uh, way of making it look like they're doing before, something? Before Nerima oh. comes in, let me just <laughs> You're burning to say yeah. something about the, the, that. This is yeah. something that, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, police raiding somebody's home, yeah? you know, these police are also human beings. And because there's a culture of corruption, you get this a kind of amount in somebody's home, they are bribed with the, you know, high that figure. Money disappears. And given the situation of police, the living conditions of our Kenya police, they can't, you know, they, 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 they can't stop getting a bribe of even uh, 50,000 or 500,000 to cover up a, a, a crime uh, a incident. Mm. What we need to do is have this, um, uh, is called the uh, Ethics and Corruption Unit, mm -hmm. uh, industry Commission be empowered to investigate so that, you know, what we are having now is conflict of interest between the National um, Criminal Investigation Department and the and Ethics and Corruption Commission. Mm. So how do we merge these entities so that they can work together to, to, to ensure that uh, these crimes are uh, actually brought to the to book? An end. All right, and uh, well... We'll wait and see whether that so raid is going to time. yield <laughs> anything. Oh, uh, yes, you had I'd, I'd actually put the question to you. Do you feel yeah. or are you convinced that they're actually doing something about it? No, absolutely not. Because when we talk <coughs> about corruption cases in our country, first of all, they have dragged for years. We still, if we were to convict those involved in corruption, I assure you, it would be a lot of our leaders today. Mm. And we can actually start yeah. over on a clean slate. Mm. And that's how much it means to us. I think we see so many huge huge amounts of figures, we can't understand as a people how it's robbing from us the future for this country. Mm. And the problem with that, with with the probes that they are doing and in and going into people's houses and raiding people's homes, is that in two weeks from now, people will fix those doors that were broken down and, and move on with on. life. Life goes on. Yes. And we have many examples we can actually quote that that has happened and nothing was yielded. At some point, remember, we also had the likes of Jimmy Wanjigi's house being broken into uh, with accusations of him having firearms and all that. And that story seems to just have fizzled out and That's it was left like that. But let's... Uh, Move on to something else, and maybe just uh, on a lighter note. Um, no, they, uh, there's a picture here which I thought was rather interesting. Now, let me just uh, bring to your attention what this is. These are some people in France who have a competition where you run and jump into mud and basically just have fun with mud. So I have a suggestion for our tourism board. Maybe they should just bring them to Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now that it's raining. They would not have a hard, time, a hard time finding mud and places where they can play. But that also, of course... Um, Leaves us with a question of how we are doing in Nairobi. Nerima. <laughs> the potholes are just too big. I, I, can't, I can't even drive because I'm afraid of damaging my car. Mm. But it's, it's problems. We have different problems. When you look at developed countries, you know, they find entertainment in things that we struggle through every day. Mm. And it's unfortunate that we talk about these things this way. The fact that we are a country, a city, a city that's one of the most developed in Africa, Mm. And we, just like you said, the garbage, the potholes, the mud, these are issues, again, related to corruption. If we took care of our corruption, we wouldn't have all these complaints that we have on the daily. Mm. We would be able to talk about a city that we're proud of, that it doesn't have to and rain for things to stand still. I mean, still. the whole week we're just talking about corruption. It even uh, <laughs> limits us to, to you know, talk, look at issues. It's, it's like the weather. It's, yeah, it's like you talking know. about the weather. Mm. And not much you can do about yeah. it. But, um, uh, uh, Barnett, We've also had Mike Sonko out, apparently, running the city from outside the city. He's a man under siege. Uh, Mike Sonko, I think, uh, what's happening to him is that the cartels have really squeezed him and is um, at the end of everything. But he refuted claims that he's operating from his machacos home. I read a statement by 
the communication director from the Nairobi City Hall, mm -hmm. and he was saying that uh, the, the, the governor has several homes, so he can say to meet in any of uh, his homes, including Mombasa, Kilifi, I mm. don't know where, you know. So Machakos is one of the, just one of the homes mm. that he decided to hold uh, a a the, meeting. the meeting from. But uh, Nairobi as a city is now in deplorable conditions. Things are bad. And it's upon, you know, this uh, publicity stance by the, the governor and trying to, you know, to cry that, you know, Katelsa State House is fighting him, I don't know what, you know. If he just put his foot down and says, yes, I want to work, I don't know what's, what's happening with the Songo. And maybe some people might start now questioning and saying, okay, maybe leadership uh, uh, runs concurrent with the level of education. Mm. Because uh, during Kidero's time, or uh, Kidero is a, uh, I don't know, he's a medical doctor. Um, during his time, we didn't have him crying so much, complaining so much, despite the fact that he was in opposition and the government ODM or CODE and the government of uh, the Jubilee was there. But now we have a governor who is in government. But he's still crying that, uh, you know, he's being controlled or he's being, uh, his services are being, uh, you know, uh, curtailed by, 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 by state house, mm -hmm. you know. These are things that they can sort out as a party within mm -hmm. Jubilee and say, okay, it's our responsibility to ensure that Nairobi County is running. And if Song is unable to run this county, I think it will be honorable for him. To know, it, it will be even, uh, uh, it, it, it will be a legacy mm -hmm. for him to just... Call it a day and say, okay, and resign, the Europeans, you elected me, but it seems I don't know what I went to do in City Hall. Mm. So please allow me to, to engage in other things. Okay. He can run for MP. He did very well as an MP. He can run for MCA. He said that MCA and President is the only position that is now he can run for. He can run so for. he can go and run for MCA. But Nairobi looks too huge for Songo. And, and well, you say that he said he can run for MCA and president. He probably yeah. would go for president. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's weird. And see, Narima, yeah. do you see a day where we have a leader <coughs> of that uh, stature and caliber basically doing the honorable thing? If you're unable to work, just say that I have been unable for whatever reasons. Uh, case in point, somebody like Polika. He had a very good job and he said, given the way things mm -hmm. are going here, I really cannot deliver what I promised the, the Kenyan people, yeah. uh, Nairobi people, and I quit. Mm -hmm. I think I think that it's it's possible, but you also have to remember, even with Igathe, when he did that, he was criticized. Mm -hmm. And culturally in Kenya, it seems that when you do give up or when you do say you would like to resign, we don't find that reason justified enough. Mm -hmm. Because even when we look at the boards where we've seen again these corruption issues leadership should resign from it because mm. you are not able to stop it or as a leader you are held accountable and responsible for it so we saw with the ncpb where the <laughs> commissioner did resign last mm. week and so that's something that in kenya we don't see quite often and i do believe that in the future we'll begin to see more and more people mm -hmm. standing up and holding themselves accountable all right and uh well there you go. So let's also look at page 10, which, I mean, I cannot uh, mention that because that is uh, part of our products, KTN Radio Maisha bag trophies. And this is the point where you give us accolades and say that you've been doing a fantastic <laughs> job, despite the fact that there's been a lot of corruption in this country. Uh, but yes, uh, there were awards yesterday, <clears throat> and Standard Group Brands scooped 14 awards uh, in three categories after voting uh, by, uh, by about 4.9 million Kenyans. So I give you the chance to now just congratulate us. Or say whatever you have thank to say you, about this. Thank, thank you, Mike. And you know, this is... Uh... These the, the awards were well earned, and I want to congratulate the standard uh, group for uh, scooping the majority of the award. And one thing I would like to say is that uh, I think uh, KTN News and uh, KTN generally have given a platform to several people, especially the uh, upcoming, you know, professionals mm -hmm. uh, who are able to articulate issues and, you know, engage in uh, uh, serious discussions. Uh, on matters that affect this country. Mm -hmm. So I think the platform that have been given, you know, initially you could not get uh, young people like uh, the two of us here seated and, you know, engaging in this kind of discourse. Mm -hmm. But at the Citizen and uh, KTN, uh, sorry, <laughs> KTN. <laughs> you better be you careful. You're so well. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm going to say I support KTN, everything. KTN News. <laughs> 
has given us this platform, mm. especially for young people, upcoming young people, where we are now able to actually engage. Mm. And uh, I think it's a uh, right thing, and we are in the right direction. Thank you, thank you. Darima, anything well you want to say done. about it? Well done, well done, Katie. Except this. <laughs> <laughs> All right.